About midnight, lights appeared behind the trees, and our Lord went to rouse his disciples who had fallen asleep again. Rise, he said, behold, he that will betray me is at hand. A band of soldiers and servants from the chief priests with lanterns, torches, and weapons were coming stealthily into the garden, led by a man who looked about here and there as if in search of someone. He had given the party a sign, saying, Whomsoever I shall kiss is he. Lay hold on him and lead him away carefully. Going up to Jesus, he said, Hail, Rabbi, and kissed him. Jesus said to him, Friend, whereto art thou come? Judas, dost thou betray the Son of Man with a kiss? It was the last warning, a tender word, and a solemn one, and both thrown away. Then knowing all things that were to come upon him, he went forward and said to the soldiers, Whom seek ye? They answered, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus answered, I am he. As soon as he had said this, they went backwards. Judas, the soldiers, the priests, fell on their faces before him. He let them rise and asked again, Whom seek ye? They answered, Jesus of Nazareth, and answered, I have told you that I am he. If therefore you seek me, let these go their way. He pointed to his disciples and forbade the soldiers to touch them. Then his enemies came and bound him fast. Lord, shall we strike with the sword? cried Peter. And without waiting for an answer, he drew a sword. He had with him, and striking one of the servants of the high priest, cut off his right ear. But Jesus said, Put up thy sword into its place. The chalice which my father hath given me, shall I not drink it? And bending for it, he touched the servant's ear and healed him. Then the disciples, leaving him, fled away. But Peter and John, ashamed of their cowardice, soon returned and followed their master as he went is led to the palace of the high priest. This was Caiaphas, though many of the Jews who would not acknowledge a man appointed by the Romans regarded Annas, his father-in-law, as high priest. The palaces of the two were separated by a courtyard only. All was astir when there was soldiers arrived with the prisoner. Annas, a cruel and wicked old man, the chief contriver of the plots against our Lord, had sent for him that he might enjoy the sight of his enemy, now helpless and humbled. At the house of Caiaphas, the members of the Sanhedrin were arriving for trial that was to be held there immediately. Annas questioned our blessed Lord about his doctrines and his disciples, and hoping of getting him to say something that would be turned against him. A lord who saw in his heart bade him to ask who had heard his teaching. On this, the servant of Annas, thinking to please his master, struck Jesus a heavy blow on the face, saying, Answerest thou the high priest so? Jesus answered gently, If I have spoken evil, give testimony of the evil. But if well, why strikest thou me? The Sanhedrists were now assembled at the house of Caiaphas and seated in a semicircle on cushions. Caiaphas as president on a platform, our Lord was brought by his guards and placed standing before his judges for trial. It was a strange trial, for the death of the prisoner was already decreed, and all that was wanted was some evidence against him to give an appearance of justice to the sentence. But his life had been so fully that there was no hope of finding any amiss in it. False witnesses were therefore brought in. But their testimony did not agree. Jesus heard all and was silent. The prophet Isaiah had said of him, He shall be dumb as a lamb before his shearer, and he shall not open his mouth. At length Caiaphas flushed with anger and rose up and exclaimed, Answerest thou nothing to the things that are laid to thy charge by these men? But he answered nothing. What was to be done? How could he be made to speak? The crafty president sees away. He will put a question which the accused will be bound to answer, and on that answer he can be condemned. See them standing there face to face, the high priest in his robes of office, the Son of God with his hands bound behind his back. I adjure thee by the living God, said Caiaphas, that thou tell us if thou be the Christ, the Son of God. Jesus said to him, Thou hast said it, and hereafter you shall see the Son of Man sitting on the right hand of the power of God and coming in the clouds of heaven. This was all they wanted. Transported as it were with holy indignation, 
The high priest seized his garment and tore it from the neck down. He hath blasphemed, he cried. Behold, you have heard the blasphemy. What do you think? And they answering said, He is guilty of death. A disgraceful scene of insult and cruelty followed, in which the high priest himself seemed to have set the example. The men that held him mocked him and struck him, and they did, and they did spit on his face and bluffeted him, and they blindfolded him and smote his face with the palms of their hands, saying, Prophesy unto us, O Christ, who is he that struck thee? While all this was going on before Annas and Caiaphas, another scene was taking place in the courtyard below, where the servants were waiting to hear the result of the trial. The night was cold, and they had made a fire, and were standing around it, warming themselves. Peter, who had come into the court, was warming himself with the rest. The light was full upon his face, and the portress, who had let him in, after looking at him intentively, said, Thou also wast with Jesus of Nazareth. Peter was frightened and denied before them all. Woman, I know him not. And the cock crew. A little later, another maid saw him and said to the standers by, This man was with Jesus of Nazareth. Again he denied, and with an oath I know not the man. An oath this time, and his master is the man. About an hour after, when it had got about among the servants that one of the disciples of the Galilean had dared to come in amongst them, they came about Peter and said, Surely thou art one of them, for even thy speech doth betray thee. Even the commoner sort in Jerusalem made fun of the pronunciation and talked of the north country folk, and Peter had only to open his mouth to prove that he was unmistakably from Galilee. Poor Peter, he had been getting more and more frightened, thoroughly terrified. Now he began to curse and swear, saying, I know not this man of whom you speak. The cock crew again, and at the same moment our Lord passed through the court, he was suffering cruelly from the hands of his tormentors, but more cruelly from the lips of his chosen disciple who had denied him. Yet there was no indignation in his heart. Rather, was it full of pity for one who after all had followed him into danger out of love. And the Lord turning looked on Peter, and Peter remembered the word that Jesus had said unto him. Before the cock crowed twice, Thou shalt thrice deny me, and going forth he wept bitterly.